Hi guys, I am here to provide you with a walkthrough of the Insta360 Studio 2022-1 version, well basically the latest version, version 4. Now this represents a big upgrade from the last version of this software, which is used to reframe your 360 videos shot with the Insta360 One X2 or One R, and um, you can also play around with some settings if you use the Go 2 as well. So I'm going to take you through exactly what the new features are of this uh, of the new version, and I'm going to take you on a walkthrough for basically all of the features, um, how to use them in case you have never used this software before. I'm going to do it just completely uh, ad hoc. Live and we'll see what happens. We'll see what we can create with this software, which I've used many times before. It's actually pretty decent. Now let's start off by looking at what's new since the last version. Well, the most obvious thing is that the user interface, the design has been completely uh, changed, transformed, and it is a lot, looks well, it looks a lot more modern. It's a lot more organized through these tabs here where all of the settings are, as well as the previews. A second upgrade is the implementation of automatic import. That basically means when you you plug in your Insta360 camera, a little pop-up icon will come um, up on the screen and you'll be able to automatically import everything straight away. Just saves you a, a minute or so of having to drag and drop everything in. There is also an undo function. This is something that we've been asking for for a while because editing 360 video can be quite uh, complicated and you can get things wrong, you have to experiment, and when you do get things wrong, it's kind of annoying not to be able to just undo and redo something. So here it is, undo, uh, something we've been waiting for for a while, very glad it's here. Another upgrade is the project management tab which we find here. Now this basically allows you to save separate projects using the same video. So for example this video I've edited as you can see here and I've saved it as the first project. However, I can use exactly the same video and make an entirely new video out of it. So this is the same um, this, this the same starting video, but I edited it completely differently. And we can reframe the 360 video in a completely different way and render them out without having to start all over again. So that is super, super helpful. There is also now an export queue, so instead of having to export one by one and not be able to do anything, you can now add your exports to a queue and carry on working. So obviously if you have a lot of videos to edit, then that will save you having to wait every time you want to export something. And finally, if you use a Mac, one of the newer ones with the M1 uh, system or chipset, whatever it's called, then the studio is now fully compatible with that as well. Right, so that's it for the upgrades, but now let's go into the walkthrough. I'm going to walk you through kind of what all of the buttons do, what all of the settings are, then we're going to go into editing some footage, and I'll show you some ones that I've already edited as well. So once you've imported your footage, which you can do through that automatic importer, or you can drag and drop, you'll see the files here, and they are very nicely displayed in very large thumbnails, which is also a fairly new feature. You can also hover your mouse over the uh, the preview, and if you drag a you'll be able to see a preview of your video so you'll know exactly which one it is if you shoot some similar ones this is pretty helpful as well now let's go into these tabs here these uh, these basically where all the options are we'll go through them one by one so this is the stabilization tab this is where you can activate or deactivate the stabilization basically I recommend you keep it on pretty much every single time. Even if you are not moving, it will still correct the horizon. It's basically the reason to get this camera because of the stabilization is so good. Now, direction lock is a slightly different story. It will depend what you're doing, whether you want to have direction lock on or off. When direction lock is off, the camera view will remain pointed in the same direction, regardless of whether you've moved and if we turn direction lock on, now the camera view will move depending on how you moved the camera. Now it's kind of hard to tell in this video, but if we take a look at this one, which I found on YouTube, it kind of shows you more what it means. I find it easier to have direction lock off because it allows you to reframe your videos slightly easier. It doesn't kind of try and force its way to look a certain direction. But if you are shooting shots such as dash cam footage or you attached your camera to a bike or a surfboard and you want to follow the direction of what, wherever you're traveling, then you would have the direction lock on and you wouldn't have to do much editing then. Okay, let's go to the stitching tab, which is another quite important one you should consider. Now the option you choose here will depend if you've used any of the accessories. As you can see here, it's pretty obvious which ones um, are available. And if you've used any of those, then you should select that stitching option. As in this video, I did not use anything like that. So um, I don't need to select. Now you can see the stitching line here, the stitching optimization is something that most people should use. Now let's, if we turn on dynamic stitching, 
as you can see, it's improved it already um, just by turning on this little button here. So I recommend everyone pretty much do that. Now we can even try a little bit harder to calibrate the stitching, see if that works. And once again, it's made it a little bit smoother and you can basically not see anything at all. So I would really recommend if you see a stitching line at all, using the dynamic stitching and calibrate stitching options. Media processing tab, now this is really only needs to be used the AquaVision if you are shooting underwater and as we in this video I have not, um, it will basically give it a slightly clearer view and a more blue tinge. True audio, if you have recorded any kind of voice audio then you would select that. The logo settings, fairly self-explanatory. If you wanted to add your own logo, you could do that here, or you could add one of the Insta360 ones. Um, I pretty much have the logo off all the time because, I mean, I don't really need that uh, kind of floating around. Again, we went through the project management tab. Um, it just allows you to switch between different projects, as you can see here. So let's take a look at the user interface and what everything means. Let's start with the timeline. The timeline has actually been redesigned to be much more similar in appearance to programs like Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve. When you hover your cursor over the timeline, you will notice a preview of whichever frame the cursor is on, so you can see very clearly where in the video you are. You can trim the video by dragging these little points um, at either end, so I trimmed my video up to here, and then at the end trimmed the end off as well, so that's very easy to do. It's also here you can change the aspect ratio of your, uh, of your video. Um, there's these three buttons here that's actually on the preview screen. The top one allows you to change the aspect ratio. This is in a one-to-one -one aspect ratio, which would be good for Instagram. But if you wanted to shoot something for YouTube, then you would choose 16.9. And a vertical option, which would be good uh, for TikTok or Instagram reels or stories. If you press the control key and use the scroll wheel of your mouse, you can also zoom into the timeline to just get a more accurate look at where you are. Now, the only other icons you really need to consider are these here. They are the keyframe, deep track, and time shift options. Now I'm gonna go into more detail about what all of those are, because that's basically what you're gonna to use to edit your videos. So let's look at how we reframe our 360 videos. This is basically what this program is designed to do. You're designed to uh, basically take these 360 videos, add these keyframes in, and then create a normal video that's very dynamic. You can control wherever you want the camera to be pointing at any one time. In order to start reframing, you've gotta make sure you're in the reframe option uh, up here. So there's these two icons. One of them is just to view the video. It's not really that useful, but next to it is the reframe tab. This is where you want to be to have all of the options available. So let's just take a look first at a video that I have already reframed and see the kind of thing I can do. This is already these points here represent the keyframes I've chosen and the lines represent the transitions between them. So let's have a look. So there we go, it was basically a video coming through this window or whatever it used to be a window and then following me then going up and I had to do that by reframing and making sure I was always in the middle of the frame using these keys here. So we can start a new project, hopefully, with this new project management option. I can show you exactly the same thing. Well, I can make a different video using the same video. But so I've cropped it to where I want it to start. I don't really need any of this uh, part. We're just getting ready. So this is where I want my first point to be. Now I'm gonna make a different video. I'm not gonna copy be the last one because it just make it more interesting. So just drag your cursor on the screen and um, just find where you want the first shot to be. Now I'm going to do it maybe looking up here. This is what I want to start with. So I found my spot. Now all I do is press this little plus icon here. It gives us our first keyframe. Now move along the timeline to the next point you want to be at. So I would say I want to be here and I'm just going to follow to go under this window. I'm gonna zoom in slightly as well. Now you can control where you want your next shot to be, either by dragging the cursor and using the scroll wheel, or you can just drag along the timeline, press the plus icon and use these controls. This is kind of if you want to be very accurate um, about where you want it to go, or if you just find it easier to do it like this, it depends. I find it easier just to drag and drop using the the um, preview, the cursors, but something like that could be cool too. And it makes it easier to do these kind of spinning transitions. But yeah, I wanna be looking up here. So I'll add a few more keyframes.
Okay, now that was very rough. I haven't spent much time um, thinking about what this is actually going to look like. I just wanted to demonstrate. So as you can see, I chose basically where I wanted the camera to be pointing at any one time and um, just basically added the keyframe. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, actually that didn't turn out too badly considering I spent literally about 45 seconds on it. Now what you can do here as well is also edit the transitions. Now in order to do that, basically click on the little line that's in between the two keyframes and you'll see here different transition options. Now this basically determines how smoothly or how quickly or in which way the uh, camera moves between each keyframe. So if we select a slip in and fade out between these two and let's see what that looks like. So as you can see, it kind of went very quickly and then slowed down. Now, if we select the opposite, it was very slow and then went back uh, very quickly. Now, my preferred one is either to keep it smooth um, so that everything kind of runs at the same speed or sometimes fade in and fade out can be pretty good as well because it just makes the transitions very smooth too. Let's have a look. I actually think that was quite good. And I think if we removed this keyframe and did that, it might even look better. Let's have a look. Yeah, actually, I think that looked better. So you can see you can play around with these quite a lot. You can get a lot of creativity out of them. So you can be really creative with these keyframes. You can uh, basically do anything you want and mixed in with these different transitions, you can be very creative and you can get a lot of different effects. These are just very, actually very basic shots that um, I'm showing you here. These transitions can actually make quite a difference depending on the kind of shot you want. I think there are some videos out there about transitions. Maybe I'll do one as well. Right, let's take a look at the next option, which is deep track. Now, this basically allows you to track an object uh, just by basically highlighting it. And then the, uh, the computer, the AI will try and track that object for as long as it can or as long as you tell it to stop. Now let's see if it works here and how long it works for. As you can see, it's just trying to track the subject for as long as possible. Um, this could be basically whatever you want it to be. Usually it's a person or an animal or something. Oh, look, there I am. Now I'm getting in the way. And it's still, even though I got in the way, it's still tracking this person, this poor person who's now on my YouTube channel. Maybe I should try and track myself. So yeah, just to highlight whatever you want to track, um, press that button and then um, it will track the subject for as long as the, it possibly can. This could be useful if you were skiing, if you were skiing next to someone, snow surfing, snowboarding, it can make it a really cool effect. Oh, look, it's still going. And yeah, it's um, one of the most unique things about these cameras and this software. I don't know of any other software that can do that. Hi. So yeah, it works, see, um, tracking myself. So this would be in lieu of keyframes. Uh, you wouldn't need to add any keyframes to do this. So if you wanted your video to be um, entirely focused on a single subject and you were following that subject, then that would be a really useful way of using this feature. Okay, and finally, we're gonna look at time shift, which is actually one of my favorite things to do with 360 cameras, particularly this one on. So shooting a time shift is a little bit different. I'm actually gonna make a video about the best ways to do that, but let's just say I shot this video specifically to be a time shift video. So let's click on the option. And as you can see here, this kind of red thing pops up. This basically represents how long you want the time shift to last. Now time shift essentially means either speeding it up or slowing it down. In this case, I'm going to speed it up to a kind of hyperlapse. So I want the entire video to be a hyperlapse. I could just select a little bit, then leave a little bit um, uh, normal and then go back. So um, I'm just going to do the whole thing, but you can choose whatever you want to do. Now we have the option of the speed. If I wanted to do slow motion, I would drag it down and you can do up to a quarter slow motion, but that's not what I shot this video for. Kind of, I'm going to do up to 32 times, I think. So this will increase the speed uh, of this section by 32 times. And I've also got the motion blur on, which makes it look uh, a little bit better. So it's not going to show it here. This is not 32 times faster than um, what it was because it needs to be rendered out. So this would be going very quickly. Um, I will show you at the end what this looks like. But what you should also do is combine the fast motion with the keyframes. Whenever everything's going in a straight line, I want it to remain um, pointing in exactly the same direction. I want it to remain fairly straight. So I'm just clicking along 
that seems fine. So it's when we get to a turning like this, you do a keyframe before, and then as it turns, I don't want it to be facing this way, now I want it to be facing this way. There we go, that's what I want. It will follow the direction of whatever, whenever I'm turning, so it's always pointing forward. That's kind of what we want to see. So I'm going to quickly create this, and then I'm going to show you at the end what it looks like. But we will speed up that process for you now. Okay, so that's me finished editing, now let's see what it looks like. So that's how you'd create a hyperlapse effect using the time shift option in the studio software. You can also obviously do slow motion, but that's not appropriate for this video, but it's basically the same thing. You would just reduce the speed rather than increase it. Okay, and I guess the final thing to show you is the export option. Now let's just say we've finished all of our editing, let's say just for this project here, and now we wanna export. Now uh, the export button is here, this purple, um, not purple, yellow square, press export. And these are, this is the, the frame that comes up. If you want a reframe video, which this is, you stick to this screen. If you wanted something to view back on a VR headset or to manipulate or to upload to YouTube in a 360 format, then you would click that one. In reframed, you have the option of choosing where you want to save it. The bit rate, which to be honest, I would not keep put any higher than roughly what it is. Um, if you put it way up to the top, all that's gonna do is increase the file size. It will not increase the quality. The resolution you could, if you wanted, upscale it. But again, I wouldn't bother. I would keep it at the resolution it's supposed to be. You can't really change the frame rate. The only other thing you can change is to uh, is, is what encoding format you would choose. For most of the time, H.264 will probably be fine. H.265 is not much different than H.264. The file size will be a little bit smaller. I think most, uh, most playback software will be fine with this as well. ProRes is if you want to keep the maximum quality at the highest uh, file size. This is not really used for playing back or uploading, but if you wanted to edit this in Premiere Pro or another editing program, that's what you would use. And obviously you have these options here, which uh, you can either choose or not to choose. So guys, that's it. That is the Insta360 Studio version four. I uh, hope you have found this useful. I think I've gone through pretty much everything that this thing can do. It does keep di being updated every year with quite a big upgrade so I'm pretty pleased with it. I think it's a great uh, piece of software, especially if you can't afford or don't want to use Premiere Pro, which I admit is very expensive, a monthly fee, whereas this is absolutely free. And you can get some really cool shots with it. Like I said, all of the ones I've shown you have been made with this program. I hope to see in the future something like um, a color corrector. I think that's the only thing that is missing from this program is just something you could uh, change the saturation, the highlights, the stuff like that. I will be doing more videos on these cameras and um, other software you can use, so stay tuned. I hope you found this useful. Until next time, I'll see you around. Bye.